Each week we listen to an album, here's all our mind Just know it's gonna take about three hours of your time To hear us complain or praise each other's taste But no matter what, at the end of the day We're just best friends who love different music We are earbuds, earbuds, earbuds This is earbuds Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Earbuds. If you're watching this on YouTube, first of all, thank you very much. Please like and subscribe and comment down below. Tell us everything you're thinking about. We want to know, we really do. Good or bad, good or bad. And if you don't want to watch it on YouTube, but you think that's your only option, no, no, no. <laughs> find us on all podcast platforms and follow us there. You can download the audio only episodes and listen to them on your way to freaking work, baby. Oh my God. This is Earbuds. We're back. Welcome back to Earbuds. So throw up those inverted butt cheeks for us, um, ear, uh, ear gang, because this is where we exist sometimes within the inversion of the Venn diagram of the music we like. The Cha. two of us. Cha. And I guess the world, right? Cha. Cha. But you'd have more of like a... You'd have more circles if there were more people. Anyway, we'll get into that later. But with the two of us, we like stuff out here. I like stuff over here. He likes stuff over here. But we like the same sort of stuff in the middle. Yeah. But we like to explore what's on the fringes. What? <laughs> <laughs> what's on the fringes? What's on the fringes? What do I like that he doesn't like? Well, last week you brought us... God, what'd you bring last week? And we swap each week. We swap each week. So it's kind of like wife swap, but it's like band swap. Yeah. I bring an artist I like, show it to him. You ever watch wife swap? Where he's like, we actually pray before dinner, but they're like, but I'm a Satanist or whatever. Mm -hmm. Crazy. That's yeah. crazy that you used to be able to do that stuff. And not that, anymore. Not no, with woke. No. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, last week, did I bring, what was I the last know. one? It's been a while since we recorded. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Uh, was it uh, Briston Maroney? That's it. How did oh, we get to yes. here? Okay. <laughs> That's what I was wondering. <clears throat> Briston Maroney was a little Nashville pipsqueak. That's right. He is a little Nashville Thank pipsqueak. Thank you. I don't know. You might be listening to this 100 years in the future. They haven't put his head in a jar or whatever. So I said. And I hope they do. Briston, we hope they put your head in a jar and that you talk like a Futurama cartoon. Like Nixon. So okay. you said. So I said, I'm thinking of a singer songwriter that is like that. Cause I said, so what do I like? Cause I'm, I'm not, I'm not digging this as my favorite tune you brought me. Right. Uh -huh. So I said, I'm thinking of a guy that lives in Nashville. He's a singer songwriter, but he splits his time with his home country of Canada. Oh, Canada. Canada. Or if you're uh Ralphie, wait, what's the guy's name? Raffi, the banana phone guy. He's like C A N A D A. He's got a song about Canada. Maybe you can bring that next week. So, who was I talking about? I was talking about Dallas Green from Alexis on Fire, also known as City and Color. Color. I was thinking of City and Color, mm -hmm. spelled with a U. But I said to get to him there, I need to take you back to the beginning of my roots with him. And I said. We'll do that. Yeah. Because you got to know this before you know the other thing. And that doesn't mean I'm going to bring him next week, but somewhere when we get to it. But do you have to bring him next week? No. I mean, uh, well, go, just do go I have ahead. to set up the steps to get there? Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay. because how did I get into him is through this music. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. So that's true. That's I was just like, I'm not just going to bring that and say, here's this. I'm giving you context for my life. I understand my life. I forgot. This is about you. Let's do everything you want to do. <laughs> no. So this. Okay. So this is. So I picked Alexis on fire. Uh, old crows backslash young Cardinals, Cardinals. which is their. Um, their fourth album mm. came out in 2009. This is not the album that I got into them with, but I thought this was a good sort of interesting spot in their career that we could talk about. Mm -hmm. I asked you to listen to a different song before this album. That's right. Did you even do that? Of course. So to get into Lex on fire, it is 2000 something. 
2006, their album Crisis comes out. They've gotten big with their their first two albums, big in sort of the hardcore or let's say screamo sort of stuff in the early 2000s. Their first album just turned 20. Their second album just turned 20. And it's pretty soon in a couple of years, their third album's going to turn 20. Whoa. So I was watching... Time moves forward perpetually no matter what you do. So we'll listen to that. Okay. This album I thought was good. I've, I've listened to this album so much. This was actually when I had my first car, it only took cassettes. And I had purchased the newest Under Oath album and I had purchased the newest Alex on Fire album on CD. And I had a cassette slash CD player in my room and I learned how to dub in reverse. Mm. So I made cassette tapes of CDs I had. Sure. And this these were the two, this was one of the two that I had in my car. So I would listen to this constantly because I could only listen to cassettes if I didn't have the little cassette that plugged into your iPod. Right. Still not really sure how that worked. How did that work? Seems like a uh, more advanced technology than yeah. we have now. It really does. And it was like $10 for one of those things. Yeah. So true. I would listen to this constantly in the car. Big fan of them. Um, but I think in 2006, so I would have been 13 or 14. And I was watching, I would watch, I believe what happened was I was watching VH1's Headbangers Ball, which I would watch for new artists. Because that's kind of what you do, huh? In middle school or whatever, you high school. You want to find the next thing that is going to take over your world. What's making me excited? So I'm watching Headbangers Ball. I'm watching... Be honest. Did you think it was going to be something else when you saw Headbangers Ball and you wanted to get excited? <laughs> Just be... Hey, you're, you're a teenager. You're right. in your room. I, it's either it's either Vampiros Lesbos on um, like video on demand... Or you're trying to watch whatever, like the midnight movie is on Comedy Central because mm -hmm. they might have some uncensored stuff. You're watching Headbangers Ball. Yeah. I was disappointed, but then I was excited in a different way. Yeah. And so the music video for this song came on for Crisis. Uh, it's called This Could Be Anywhere in the World is the name of the song. And I just, I just fell in love. And I said, this is, this is everything or <laughs> whatever people say now. Yeah before woke so let's play that let's play a little of that Buy a Cigarro shirt online from our web store if you're watching the video. But we're not talking about this album. No. But just to set up, it was in the vein. I had known, I knew who the band was, but we're we're also Gosh. young, so I know people go back to like I actually got into them in their last album. Again, I don't care. We're young. I'm this is what you finding get into it. the shit as it comes out, brother. You find it when you find it. So is that so bad? Um, but this was exactly what I was looking for. I like the unclean vocals in a lot of stuff, and I said this guy sounds crazy. His voice is very thrashy and raw and then our d dog comes in <laughs> and i hear a little angel from heaven on this kind of very heavy apocalyptic sounding song mm. and he's like <laughs> and you go you could do that and it's cool mm. you know i'm like that's that's cool because you're looking you're watching a lot of this like extreme music on this headbangers ball and i'm like he's got an incredible voice yeah and he's lending it he's not even the lead singer in the band he's just lending it as his little they kind of invert the the thing 
yeah. <laughs> where you know like the screamo thing of mainly you've got your mainly clean vocalist clean guy and, then and then there's then, a guy in the corner yeah there's like <laughs> just for the breakdown so you've got mainly the hardcore guy and then you've got him he's just he's playing guitar on the side and then they actually have three vocalists so you're getting you're getting george you've got wade and then you've got dallas but i was just like this guy's voice is incredible but it's in the style of music that I want to listen to, mm. which is a little heavier. Mm. And then, uh, so I buy that record. Awesome. Listen to it nonstop. Um, all the time, wherever I'm at. Love it. Sure. Then, it was also at a point where I think I just ordered the CD from them online and they sent it to me signed by the whole band. Yeah. I was just like, okay, cool. Mm. Then uh, a couple years go by, this one comes out. A um, little bit different sound. I think they're going more into sort of a post-hardcore sort of deal. And then they break up because no. Dallas and Dallas City and Color has sort of become like its own thing. City and Colors is main squeeze. City and Colors is main squeeze. I think he's got like at this point in time now like six or seven albums out as City and Color. So he's got more albums with that than he does with Alexis on Fire. But at the time, he'd put out a demo of some stuff he had done called Sometimes, which was some acoustic stuff he had written on the road. He put out a second album, which was really big, and I think in sort of the alternative singer-songwriter space. Uh And in Canada, it became huge. It was like a huge seller. And he was when he wasn't touring with them, he was touring with the other band. And I think between being like married and being on the road, like... Six months with one band, six months with another. He's it's like, hard, I can't man. do this anymore, which makes sense. Sure. So he was like, I can't do Alexis on Fire anymore. I think some of them were not getting along as happens when you're in a band since you were, whatever, 15 or something. So he goes to do City in Color. And then finally, Alexis on Fire put out their first album in 13 years in 2022 that's right because he gave just to give a little background i think he told them i'm leaving the band but i'm not going to announce that until you figure out what you guys want to do and they you know he's not the main singer or whatever but they all write everything together and his voice is like i would say maybe one of the biggest components that sets them apart i mean george is doing his thing but like it's the the dynamic between the two of them Mm -hmm and their lyrics together. So I think they're like, we can't do this without him. Mm -hmm. So, and they, they were pretty upfront. George, the lead singer was saying the split wasn't amicable. They were not happy about this. Right. He became like a full-time firefighter. You know, they just had to get regular jobs and Dallas became like kind of a big star on his own. He did an album with pink, which is a really interesting album. It's not my favorite thing to listen to, but it's like, him and her doing it, doing some folksy stuff together, just wow. completely different from Alexis on Fire. Yeah, but they remained friends. Whatever they put out a couple singles, they played shows. I saw them play a show. I want to say maybe 2014 in Chicago. They were doing Riot Fest. They said we'll do a show for Riot Fest, but then they said we'll also do an after show. I didn't have tickets to Riot Fest, but I got tickets to the after show. Yes, right before it sold out. So everyone, after being at Riot Fest all day, goes to this little club and they play a crazy sold out. You know, and Wade had said something about how we're not going to leave you guys again. Whatever, everyone loses their mind. News outlets pick this up that basically Alexis on fire is back. They're back. And then they had to come out the statement saying, no, 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 no. He We're got a little excited. <laughs> we just will play some shows and stuff, but they've kind of had this. They're still friends. And they finally put out an album at the time though, in 2009, I guess I didn't realize this would kind of be the last we hear of them until pretty recently. 10 years later. Then I get to see him 2022. Yeah. Went to see them play. I mean, it's just, it's great. A great They're show. They're one of my great... favorite bands of all time. Oh. An incredible show. And I can't wait to hear what Landon has to say about this album. Should we get into it? There's Let's a there's a little background, right? But that's why I said we gotta do this before we get into the kind of Yeah. I do have a, a clip of a song I'll play from him at some point, but until then. Whoa. Uh, well, wait, what do you know about this band? 
that I listen to them. I know you listen to them. I know a lot of, uh, I know a lot of folks that listen to them and I just, again, one of those where I kind of, I, I, I felt like I knew what, what the vibe was and I probably wouldn't like it. So I never really tried it, but I have listened to city and color. That's more in my wheelhouse. Not, I'm not like I've listened to it in the, like I've put on an album in the background kind of thing. Cause that's kind of the type of music that you do that with. Right. And that's why with that, I don't think that's something I would, it's not something I typically listen to, which is the thing of going to, Oh, I found this guy knowing him through this sort of music Mm -hmm. and liking the juxtaposition of the two maybe lends me to, cause I will say like my girlfriend loves Alexis on fire. Mm -hmm. She's their new album. She's like, this is one of my, like, I love this album. One of the, out of all the stuff I listen to, she either likes it or kind of doesn't care. Mm. City and color, she does not like. She actively is like, I don't like him in this context. She's like, I love him and Alexis on fire. Uh We went to see them together. She loves all that. She's like, I don't, I do not care about city and color. So I think there's that where I'm like, I think I also have some sort of bias of like, I've grown up liking him and like learning how to sing from him, I think uh-huh. cause you learn what you can do in certain types of bands with his voice and stuff. Yeah. But that's just old hat and frankly old crows. <laughs> gives us a good ding, 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 ding. what did george say about this album you read this nope he said i think our final full length at the time was a little challenging for people we were dedicated to not repeating ourselves and that was appealing to some but there were there were many who were growing tired <laughs> of the ever modifying alexis on fire nonetheless in my opinion it was our best record we were actively trying to distance ourselves from a screamo scene that was completely stagnant. I think this song sort of, that's sort of the, the what calling card of this song. And I know I said old hat before and didn't really make sense, whatever, but But I think it's setting up what this album is going to be kind of knowing their first three albums Mm. through the early aughts. Mm. And uh, I was kind of bummed when I first heard this song because I was 16. I was full of vim and vigor, uh-huh. right? And piss and vinegar. Piss and vinegar and vim and vinegar. And then I hear these guys saying, we're not kids anymore. Stop <laughs> thinking of like, we're over that. You know, you kind of go, oh, <laughs> I'm still a kid. I kinda, but I like what you guys are doing. <laughs> okay. But now what? 
Oh, this is, I mean, it's top album for me. It's, I mean, well, it's not a, my favorite. I don't know if it's my favorite of theirs, but it's, that's what I was just going to It's ask. way up there. <laughs> I was just going to ask. It might be my favorite. I like crisis for, uh, what I like it for. Like I said, I don't know if there's as much to maybe discuss on our first run through with the band. Uh -huh. Then their new album is man. It's, it's like stuff. a 10 out of 10. It's, it's so it's, it's hard to say, but I think, as I've grown up with this album too, I see the maturity. I like the themes on it mm. and I like what they're doing with the genre. So what are you going to do? Sue me? No. Uh, well, I'll, actually I will. I'll take you to court for one reason. only. Okay. Why didn't you tell me sooner, baby? Oh, oh! <laughs> mommy. Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> You like this? The, the, the band's ripping, baby. This is what I want. I, you can scream all day long if you're giving me something mm -hmm. like this, in my opinion. And I know you can like it all. You can like it all. <laughs> but if you're giving me this. But you want a reason. You want to feel that groove. The groove. Mm -hmm. The When it first starts, just play the opening again. Oh, my pleasure. Because I was kind of like, I listened to the other song right. that you told me to, and I was kind of like, I, I liked it. Right. I liked it more than the other stuff, the other heavier stuff. Well, that's in the context of them heavier. I'm 14 or whatever. They're screaming, screaming. And I'm looking for. No, no, no. Don't do No, I still love I, I'm not. I did. I, did, I defended. I it's still one of my favorite. Listening to it, it's one of those songs that takes me back of to course. the first time you heard it, the first time getting to see them live. You know, when it was like mm. they're gonna be at Warp Tour, uh -huh. yeah. and I get to see them the, these Canucks with their toques, <laughs> right? And they wear the Canadian flag on their <laughs> underwear. But <laughs> shit, I said already. I don't even need to hear anymore. Mm -hmm. But then I did hear more, and I liked more. But just this, I say, well, this is. Now, what do you think of his vocals? Because I, I mean, for what I listen to, I've always found them to be different than. It's like he's not screaming. No. He's well, kind of just like... It's the sort of punky growl right. thing, but just extend it. Where like some people are just, you know, they do it occasionally. Right. He's like, that's his, his whole thing. But um, as I was listening to this album and thinking, why do... Because sometimes I think the way that you sometimes feel like people putting on a, a voice... I mean, I, I also think this way. There's... There's a way that you could tell it's fake when they're putting on a voice. Mm -hmm. If it's a pop star, if it's a punk growl, if it's a... I even think if a screamer, mm -hmm. there's only a certain type of scream that I want to hear. I imagine... But I'm, I'm probably more open to different clean vocals than you are as far as like... I feel like you have had... You've, Why is that? You've bristled mm -hmm. against some of the, the guys I've brought. Uh-huh based on their vocal affectation. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm the same way for screamers where I'm like, no, you're not, you're doing it because you have to, not because you actually want to mm -hmm. that sort of thing. And I, as I was listening to this, I was like, cause you're right. It's, it's not like a scream. It's just like a, I don't know. <laughs> and I know, it, I mean, anyone screaming, obviously, they're not supposed to be screaming. Yeah. Like a person just isn't, that's not your natural thing to right. do. So obviously there's an affectation. You can add a little more, a little more bass to your scream. You can scream up like a, a whinier scream, mm -hmm. all these things you can do when you're screaming. And I said the first, the first time through, I said, I don't, I think I just don't like certain types of screaming. Yeah. And I think I like this type of screaming. And then the few, you know, I listened to it more and more and more. And I said, no, this is the good type of screaming for me. But I, I don't like screaming too much. Too much, right. And I, But I can't think but if, if you do it, it well. Yeah. I, I like it. So I don't, I don't know. And I think you're, 
you're right because I mean, I don't know anyone like you said, it's sort of a more of a punk hardcore, just like a unclean vocal. Yeah. Where he's sort of like just yelling at you. Yeah. As if like you're saying he needs to, like what he's saying is sort of to me, it's like demands some sort of attention because there are three singers too. It really delineates who says what yeah. and w- maybe why they're saying it. I mean, sometimes also it's just what, what sounds cool, which is fine with me, baby. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there are the, I don't know anyone else that kind of sounds like him in all the music I listen to. And there are, I do probably open myself up to clearly there's like the sort of this Swedish death metal sort of thing where obviously you're putting on a voice because the guy going like, dur, bai, dur, bai. you know, they're, they're putting on like a character almost of like, uh-huh. I'm Satan's little, sure. you know, ding dong, uh-huh. which we don't like to talk about Satan on the show. It's very scary. <laughs> so very scary. But there's that stuff, which I'm kind of like, okay, it fits the style they're doing. Sure. Whereas, but there are also types of screaming I hate or that I, as I know more about music, I don't like stuff where they're, having to like oh you can see they're cupping the microphone and i want it to be like yeah like you, like it's a form of expression not just like how can i make this sound as well yeah that's and again not to always bring this up but local local music scene here when we were coming up yeah. was almost exclusively screamo like hardcore right. stuff and just it really put me off because mm-hmm. I never heard a, a good version of it. Right. In that, in that crowd, which is fine. I mean, that's the local scene. What are you going to do? But yeah, like you're saying where you, it's just like guys with the mic down their throat because they can't actually do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which that's then people are like, well, that's not whatever. Anyone can do that. So but I often think that about any screaming, but then, you know, something like this, I'm like, well, maybe anyone can't do it. Yeah, I think this is sort of his, and I know on the new record he sent, he harmonizes with Dallas and stuff, and they're like, "Why didn't you tell us you could do this before?" Because <laughs> he's got a cool voice. He sings for another band called Dead Tired when they were, um, uh, you know, he was doing that sort of as his main thing when they mm-hmm. weren't doing stuff, and he still does stuff with them, and it's just a cool sound. Yeah. Um. So I like this. I like it was a great. Great first track, I think, like you were saying, it's kind of is the thesis statement for where they were at. I think so. And I think um, the next song, which sets up, I think, I believe the next song was their first single, Mm -hmm. but I think it sets up that if I can use a, to, to coin a phrase here, it sets up that while they still might be, that while they might be old crows, I think inside they still feel like young cardinals. Oh, Jesus. get more of the uh and there's the little bridge here 
think you get more of more than previous albums to the the harmonizing and so i think a lot of times it's dallas just uh, with himself yeah. dubbed over but you get more of that where you go what how does this fit into this genre of music it's very pretty mm. yeah i gotta check out the the new album as you know i don't listen to anything else except the album that we're right. assigned i think if you like if you do like this you'll love the new one i well, think because there are certain like this song in particular mm. is like how long is this song like four minutes uh yeah yeah there it does it goes different places mm-hmm. like the cool bridge that we're just listening to now like musically it goes different places but i f- do feel like the chorus gets kind of old mm-hmm. and especially at the end they do it like 17 times it feels like yeah. where it's like oh, yeah, God, no. and they just keep doing it and you're like he doesn't really change mm-hmm. the way he sings it or anything where it kind of like i don't know i think there is a version of them even cranked up a little more that way yeah, where you're gonna hate the new album oh no <laughs> Where, where you know, they are, it sounds like they're doing even more interesting vocally yeah, stuff. It kind of starts with some punky songs like, hey, we're like, you know, mm-hmm. here's our, we're back on our, our BS to yeah. coin a phrase. Yeah. And, uh, but then they, that. they get into some other genre, you know, they, because it's been, you know, they're, there's a 12 13 years. year gap. They're 12, 12, sure. Of recording. Mm. They're all coming back together, bringing new things. And I think they're like, what is the band now? It's right. kind of whatever we want it to be. Yeah. It's interesting. I love, I think stuff like this, like you said, the end of the song in a live setting, it's very cool when everyone's singing along and they're kind of just going through it all and they're all, you know, just kind of jamming out. I, Cause I love hearing his voice do that. And I'm, I'm interested. I think the lyrics on this one kind of show the difference. Um, I think on the album for me of like what they're, what they're talking about. I mean, there's so many things to go through on these. I think a lot of this is a, there's a lot of talk on the album as a whole of like religion or mm-hmm. science or sort of what I know. humans this guy's obsessed. <laughs> it's hey, all, it's all he <laughs> wants to listen to. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it felt very much in, in line with, uh, bad religion. Oh, I'm trying to think of a bad religion song. Yeah, hey, or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've never, <laughs> never heard them. To them. <laughs> uh, but just the uh, all the superstitions to which we all cling while high minds in Geneva ponder E eight versus string. <laughs> That's a crazy thing to say like, in a song. All right, <laughs> you and Greg Gutfeld well, you can know go you talk. Read a book. <laughs> <laughs> Greg Gutfeld, yeah, from Bad Religion. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh no these are punk songs yeah to me i don't know then i look at and i'm like what are they classified as and i'm like oh no no this is punk music it really is isn't it mm-hmm. you can throw all your posts and your pre and your um you know yeah your uh big band and all that stuff at us barbershop <laughs> quartet all those labels take those and shove them right in your butt crack but which then- <laughs> we do want to remind everyone a yes. butt crack is not male cleavage. Yes, thank you. It wants an album. We have to explain that. Read the sign. So, and then it goes into the chorus, which is yeah. this, it. This is a punk song, and they're singing about birds. Yeah, nesting. In oh, the, young oh, cardinals sh- nesting in the trees. Surely that's a metaphor, Joey. Here are songs and rain your innocence on me. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Or is it? <clears throat> no, it's nice. Yep. So you're suggesting it's not a metaphor. No, I think it is. But it's just, it's an interesting turn of phrase to put into a song like this where it's a lot of nature is on the album, a lot of, yeah. you go, are these guys from Canada? <laughs> well, the other interesting thing, just the album cover itself, mm-hmm. I was going to say, is like, it kind of doesn't look right. Mm-hmm. Like, look like what you get. Mm-hmm. It does. I I like the album cover. I like a little painting of a cardinal yep. as much as the next guy, but um, not much. But <laughs> it kind of looks almost at odds with the scene mm-hmm. or what you would expect from the scene. And, and and isn't that so deliberate? And I think it is very deliberate. Yeah. That's cool. I like anyone who's an agitator. Mm-hmm. I like anyone who's 
kind of trying to do new stuff. It's it agitates in two ways where you've got those who say that's not what this is, you know, those yeah. that are going to look at that and say, oh, mm-hmm. but then you've got people that are smart that will yeah. say that's cool because this art, you know, whatever genre you're singing, it doesn't really matter if it's good music. Mm hmm. And then maybe someone that sees this album artwork and wants to listen to the album, they go, oh, yeah, ah. I agree. It's kind of like the band uh, Deaf Heaven, who I'm sure we'll get to. But their first album had it was a pink album cover oh. and it's like death metal sort of. Oh. And people were like, you it's like everyone had to make a big deal about it. It's just like, shut up. Yeah. Shut up. Because we love pink in our music. Yeah. We? So what? I'm still a rock star. What are you looking up? I look at I look at these guys and I say, "Are you an agitator?" <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, I think uh yeah, this the song's good too. Um I do think maybe it's a little too th- that was one of the the one sort of cons that I had. I feel like these are punk songs mm-hmm. and uh, there's so many of them are like four minutes long because they do just kind of because they're rock songs too well that's the thing and i mean i i love when they are just jamming and rocking out Mm -hmm. it's kind of like the opposite of what we usually say Mm -hmm. (laughs) where we're like why do people even do guitar solos (laughs) and stuff but then you hear this guy has some great interesting drum parts Mm -hmm. and like the guitar is doing cool stuff and and it's all mixed really well in this album yeah, you like can, you can hear those those toms and kind of filling in places <laughs> and, yeah you can hear it all and but then it goes back to kind of to me the most boring chorus of the album but it's so transcend don't you just love hearing him sing though yeah maybe it's just me i i like his voice i you don't know, think I, it's the best voice i've ever heard <laughs> I think it's pretty good, though. It's a nice rep- reprieve. Reprise. In this type of song, yeah, yeah. I just love that clean vocal where it's like, this guy could be doing anything, <laughs> and he chooses to stick with his roots until he quits the band. Well, yeah, I was going to say, I think he kind of chose. Yeah. Well, whatever. That's what happens when I guess you have so much money, you can just become some sort of sons of privilege. Oh, my phone just locked. Throw up your, inv- uh, your inverted butt cheeks. If you throw them up high enough... That'll help my phone unlock. It worked. We're not slowing down. Yes, honey, hunty. Hey. It won't. That's Wade. Wade's an idiot. <laughs> Get up, sit down. Doesn't that hurt? What? <laughs> My eyes hurt looking at you. Jeez. Ugly. <laughs> <laughs> the swine, they writhe and praise the infallible regime. I mean, he's really coming after. Hey, I can't help that I was born here. Yeah, it wasn't if my fault. You hate the place so much, you sure tour here a lot. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you, you sure um, you keep, my, keep my country's name out of your MF and mouth. America blaring in my ears all day. America, I don't see the glory of your ways. The oldest money flows through a bloodline. We'll see if your empire stands the test of time. That is kind of fun. Why do they care? Maybe it's kind of what's going on in Canada where we're sort of... 
Maybe they're, they're we don't care about them. That's why they have that yeah. little brother syndrome where they're like, "Look at me, yeah. please, come on." And we're like, "No, you're just wearing your shoes on the yeah. wrong feet." It's sort I of get annoying. It. You're sort of a nagging at us, right? America blaring in my ears all day. Are we? I just <laughs> I become such a patriot. <laughs> <laughs> if we're too loud, you're too old. <laughs> I forgot that they were from Canada. Yeah. What, what's that? Who cares? Why are they so mad at well, America? Well, let's say, I mean, they're from Toronto, which we know is sort of the... Well, it's where America goes to film. Right. Scott Pilgrim. Yeah. It's the America of Canada, right? Yeah. I mean, how how close can you get to us? You're basically on the... If you took a barrel down Niagara Falls, you'd be on our side. Oh, no. They go to Vancouver to film everything. Oh, that's right. They They say it's like... I don't know, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, but then they go to Vancouver. Mm -hmm. So it kind of looks like everywhere. Yeah. So maybe that's why we, because we... Cheaper to film there, so we kind of go there. We go there and use your... I think they don't have tax on their clothes. No, do we... Um, well, in Minnesota, we don't. Who's we? In Minnesota, we don't. So you you talk for America now. No wonder you're fighting against this song. <laughs> hey, any song that's anti-American, I'll take. <laughs> okay. I like it when it's I like it's when it's with my own guys saying it though. Yeah, when it's like they really know. These guys don't know Jack Squad. But then They're it's like Green with, Day, and people are like, "What do you care? You're a billionaire. You're rich." Well, I know. I I don't say that. But they are, they care for us though, right? Sweet no. Lady Liberty, you are the lost, <laughs> though you are free. I mean, they're saying they're like, hey. And this they were recording this what only seven years after our greatest tragedy. Nine uh, one one. To think that okay, within ten years, it's okay to <sighs> kind of come after us that way, King. Don't you have your own problems up in Canada? That, I think no, that's they also, don't. Yeah, that's the thing. There's nothing for them to complain about. Yeah, Trudeau, like, oh, he was in blackface all the time. Yeah, just once or twice. Just once or, or like twice. Five five times on camera <laughs> that we know of, but. No, um, America grin and bear the resentment of the world. Yeah, with all your ugliness and arrogant self self worth. I think maybe this is sort of you know you grow up people and people go. Everyone wants to come to America. Yeah, this like is, you're told in school. Actually, we're the greatest country in the world, and everyone's sad that they they don't live here. And yeah. then you grow older, and you find out people are like, no, we like people in Sweden are like. We make fun of you all the time. You are dirty, smelly. We laugh at you with our one thousand free dollars from government every month and our free health care. We actually pay the doctors to when we are not sick. Whatever made up stuff on the internet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but can you do this? What's that? Well, I would have a uh, I would have a Stone Cold, or a, no, a Hulk Hogan shirt on underneath oh, this. Oh, you were doing the Hulk mania. You pulled your shirt off for our audio listeners. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you can't do that. You can't do Sweden. that in Sweden. <laughs> but in Canada, no. Uh, do, uh, do we like this song? Uh, yeah, it's yeah, great. Yeah. It's not my favorite on the album. No. But I love, like I said, you want to criticize the country? Great. I'm in high school. I'm listening to this. Yeah. I'm saying maybe everything's not so good as the guy trying to draft me in the hallway on the way to lunch says it is. <laughs> right? Yeah. No, I agree. I mean, I, I do like, I guess I never even thought about it that they aren't I mean, from here. Yeah. Anyone can say anything about anyone. I am. I've never looked into a lot of <laughs> these songs, but it is, I do wonder sort of, yeah, what is the Canadian perspective of yeah. America? Yeah. It's kind of interesting. And on the album later, we get things about, you know, same sex relationships, all these things that I think at the time were, who are we under? Was that, was, was, was we Obama then? Was we Obama? Yeah. Obama. So they're kind of mad. They probably wrote this song. They're like, uh oh, they thought they were writing it about Bush. Yeah. Cause like, we got to get one in. Yeah. Quick. All the other bands are doing Bush songs. Yeah. They didn't know things were only going to get better and better from then on out. <laughs> Uh, lost though you are free in America. It's time to justify your pride. I like it. It's a it's a criticism from outside the country saying, "Hey, yeah. you are annoying with your patriotism." Yeah, it stop is, it. That's that's the message. That's the message. Why why what do you have to be patriotic about? That's the justify message. it. Mm -hmm. 
And they repeat that over and over. And I like that. It's, it's time to justify your pride. It's giving us. So, and you know what? They're right. I know I'm not. I know everything's so hot right now. Everyone wants to come after everyone for everything they say. But I'm going to say something. This song that came out about 12 years ago, whatever, 13 years ago. I think it's okay. I do not condone the violent rhetoric that he's using right now. We are postponing our tour and our future creative endeavors. When this episode comes out in 18 weeks, it's going to make a lot of sense. I'm going to post a video of me flying in a helicopter over Sydney. (laughs) Taken before the storm. Uh, Lost, though you are free in America, it's time to justify your pride. Yep. I'm happy with that. I like it. I did. Uh, I was mostly just kidding, but I did forget that they're Canadian. Yeah. So that was kind of a funny. But I like the song because I agree with what they're saying. I agree with what they're saying. It is funny. They're from Canada, but then it makes it even more interesting to me. Yeah. Because, it. yeah, I mean, that perspective does make sense. We're like, just pipe down, you patriotic right. dipshits. Because then they seem to be so proud about the place they're from. They're like, oh, Canada, it's where I was born and raised. Here we go. You thought the album was going to slow down? No. <laughs> Long Legs has a guitar in his room. He's <laughs> just playing guitar in his free time. <laughs> The guy can sing. I think I just don't like that song, The Young Cardinals. All right. I've given you a good idea. Yeah. Oh, baby. It just feels like they're flying. I feel like I'm circling the globe with the songs playing. It is. It's just... Brandon. And they just don't... They just aren't... They rip. Right right from the rip, they rip. And when you rip, I rip. You rip. Yes? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Sustained. Tell me about this one. Um... They have a uh, music festival, a two-day music festival they put on. All these fucking bands. Yeah. Just have their own festivals now. And so they headline one day and Alex, or awesome. City in Color headlines the other day. It's called Born and Raised Festival. <gasps> I was actually going to try to go. <laughs> I think it was happening when I was heading east last week. And I was like, can I make it to Toronto? No. No. But here's what I wanted to do for you as okay. a little treat to maybe a future epi. As a future treat to maybe a future epi. I'm this just is exciting. An idiot. <laughs> okay, so the lyrics of this song, you know them, yes? You've got them down, yes? Yeah. So. Well, I have them pulled up right here. 2013, the album The Hurry and the Harm comes out, which is <laughs> an album by City and Color listed mm. as a folk album. Interesting. This is track two, Harder Than Stone. I'm just going to play a little bit of this here. <laughs> Is this James Taylor? This is what Landon puts on in the background. He's jacking it.
Interesting, huh? He stole the song from Alexis on Fire. He quit one band. Said I don't have any lyrics, though. No T. I like this better. <laughs> and then the second time through, he sings the second part of that chorus. Like a butterfly. Here's the thing. It's a good ass chorus. Yeah. He pulls the whole. Why not? He pulls the whole thing. Don't pull my whole. <laughs> like a bird. Uh, where is it? The second one. Whatever the second one is. Um, After me, uh, like a bird <clears throat> from the north. Wait. That's the first one. Our hearts. Yeah. Will like run. a bird. Oh. We search from the north. Our uh, hearts will roll. He takes it and puts it into that. I see. That uh, whatever. The way he's singing it. That What's melody. the word? Melodies. Nah, I don't think so. Oh. So he pulls all of that into the new song. And there's some other things where they kind of go like cross paths like that. Mm. I just, it's a little Easter egg. It's kind of fun for the kids. For the kids. But this came, that album came out four years after this one. So yeah. you kind of go, hmm, interesting. Mm. But you're like, I know the truth. If you go to concerts, you go, you can go. Yeah, a little louder and kind of turn to a. He will when he's doing the Lexus on Fire stuff. He'll play. This could be anywhere in the world, and that's when you know when the real ones are because everyone they'll go, "Woo!" Yeah, you have to make sure everyone knows that you know. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah, that's why he's playing it. <laughs> Just asshole at behavior. I'm sick of ah. Uh, it's kidding. Anyway, I love this song. One of my favorites on the record. Just four in, and they're just like ripping through. Yeah, the chorus is great. Good song, dude. Baba Boo. You got anything else to say? I don't know that I do for this. Uh, Genius says this song is mostly about society and religion, what we decide to believe and what we reject. What we reject from being the truth. Okay. Well, I hope that. Um, I guess that's true. I think it is. Yeah. But it sounds like maybe whoever wrote that was a little sleep deprived. Maybe yeah. they got no rest. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no wonder the freaking kids playing drums all night. Who? Can't tell you. Basically, it's this. You know? Yeah. That's the song. Is there any part with this? Uh, yeah, I mean. Yeah, that's no rest. <clears throat> no rest for the blessed. Long lives for the wicked. So, but I always thought it was no, 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 no rest for, for the, the wicked. wicked. Hmm. But that would mean they're holding a meal to society. Hmm. This, my friend, is more in line with the reality. Take it off the album. <laughs> Take it off. <laughs> I don't want to hear this. Oh, my God. Now, this one's good. 
Uh, Born and Raised is so good, though, that I kind of just go. This one's kind okay. of a filler. For me. Because it's a lot of, like you said, repeating the same. It's the, the punk, chorus. The punky thing. Yeah. That's what, like, the, how long is this song? Oh just tell God. me. Just tell me. You don't even want to know. Just be honest. 337. Oh, my God. Almost 400 minutes. Oh, my God. I just feel like some of these need to be like th- capped at three minutes. Okay. That's kind of where I'm at with God, some of these. Like the new album? I don't know. But when you see them live too, I'll say they do spend, there's some times when it's just like, they just jam out. That's and fine. it's heavy and you're like, woo! Especially at a live show. And I, I feel like this, uh, the production on this album captures the live yeah. sound. But... They're, but you don't care because you're like, um, but it's not live. Well, I'm driving my Ford Subaru around, and I'm just yeah, trying to go to Home Goods before they close. Ford Subaru to Home Goods, yeah, but, <laughs> but, but what I'm saying is, especially live, yeah, you should extend the song to eight minutes and yeah. jam. That's what I'm here for. I like songs like that where it's they go through half the song and then they get to the bridge or something, but then they build, and then you're like, mm-hmm. oh. There's like an extra two minutes of this yeah. them just jamming out. Then he comes back to no rest. And you're like, <laughs> yeah. One guy's taped his guitar to the amplifiers or whatever. And mm-hmm. another guy, he's, I mean, his, he's just, he, his whole dick's out. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's actually SA. That's actually Guar. Oh. <laughs> uh, and yeah. they did cover I'm Just Ken for AV Club. Yeah, and, and I'm dying. Are screaming. Um, I like this song, but yeah, not probably not one of my not favorites. Not one of my favorites, but let's listen to, and we're going to go to the Northern, but we're going to let it fade out just because it goes into a little bit different sound here. Turn that up a little. Thank you. Is this the heaviest song ever written? Actually, get. Let's see where you go. Hallelujah. We'll praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then we get to. Then the nasty man does it. So there's that. I was going to say that one of their singles they came out with uh, between their newest album coming out is called Season of the Flood. That one's about seven minutes long, so you should check that one out. It's just the season of the flood. He's like, what did he say? Like, 
He comes, he comes. Um, so this what do you think about, about this one? Jordan coming later. There's a song about winter coming. I just know there's a couple that we know that probably this whole album sounds <laughs> like they, like when they were making them kids. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Uh, if you get that, you're a real one. You're <laughs> the realest one of all. And you're probably going to sue us. <laughs> yeah. So, um, no, this is this is cool. A nice little. We've had four barn burners, mm-hmm. and then. So. And just that uh, little organ. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> play it. It sounds just like it. Okay. Yeah. 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 No. Uh... <laughs> See, you're right. <laughs> Perfect spot, right in the middle of the album. And it's cool. It's, yeah, that slower sound, but it's still, it's still rocking. And then they get to that big part at the end when mm-hmm. the, yeah, the nasty man comes here in. Here comes, here comes. And you're like, God, this would be an epic trailer for yeah. like a Zack Snyder movie. It would. Yeah. And it's like, uh, like a fa- hallelujah and you see like superman flying out of earth but then there's a woman she's got like supergirl or so- someone just with big bazongas yeah and she's in slow-mo <laughs> her sucker punch too <laughs> clapping her bazongas together yeah. and it well praise the lord and then he's like don't praise the lord pray to me uh-huh. and one of the one of the sucker punch girls is like then she uses her butt cheeks to like <laughs> All right, that's not what this show is about. No, 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 and we're not. We're we didn't do Zach it. Snyder. That's Zach that. Snyder's fault. He came up with all that stuff. So, what do you think? The Northern. He thinks some of these songs are too long, but he's like, "Yeah, I watched the Snyder cut of Justice League, and it was pretty good." And all this, I'm like, "Okay, like what? Whatever you want to, whatever you think is more important with your time." Uh, I love this song. It's one oh, of my favorite. What? Well, I was gonna say also. I did realize I just double checked because on this it says. The two songs at the end are bonus tracks. Did you listen to them? Yeah, I thought they okay. were. So then, so that also goes into me thinking the album might be a touch too long. Yeah, I don't remember if I said last week. I'm pretty sure I did. That the probably two you did. Songs but are not on the album. I think I'm pretty sure it said it ends with burial. You probably did, and uh, <laughs> and in, so that probably also makes sense now that you see that you go, mm-hmm. oh yeah, that is the last song. But what's strange about it is on this. Mm-hmm. Online, Two Sisters comes before Wayfarer Youth. Yeah, I'm not sure what to think about that. I think there was a difference on one of the vinyl pressings, too. It's one of those Canadian things. Well, we'll I mean, maybe Actually, we'll get to it this. if we if we look at them a well, little bit. Yeah. At the end, we might uh, have time to touch on them. But I actually like Wayfarer Youth as a closer. I think it's a great closer. Holy crap. Okay, well... I will say this. It, actually, though. it was one of my favorite songs on the album, Wayfair Youth. <laughs> and it's a bonus track. Oh, you mindless numbskulls. Don't you know what you're doing? Oh, you mindless numbskulls. Don't look at my phone keeps beeping. What the H? Remind me in the morning. It said, take your big pill. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So the, uh, I think for me though, cause I had the CD uh. also, it only had up to burial, burial, sure. burial. Mm-hmm. and uh, so I had listened to that version so much. It wasn't until God streaming, where I'd listened to the the record, where I had to yeah. put the record on to listen to the bonus tracks. Yeah, so they weren't in my oeuvre yeah. as much. So basically, I don't care. We'll, we'll touch on them slightly. So we'll see. All right, the Northern is one of my favorite songs on the album. Yeah, it's interesting, great. just because it is based on a hymn. I believe they are all pretty much self self-professed atheists they have so many songs in this or city and color kind of about rejecting religion Mm -hmm. outright so it's 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 interesting if you were just listening to it in the car with me you'd think i was 
Taking you to church, I worship like a dog. It's a it, d- it put me in mind of uh, your little potato friends over in Me Without You, mm-hmm. where even the the musically the vibe of it is almost Me Without You. Yeah, it is kind of cool. Me Without You. Mm-hmm. Which I can't imagine my life without Yui. Yui, we've loved having you help us with production on these episodes, and uh, we hope to have. Can't think of life without you, E. Mm-hmm. So it also reminds He's me. He's my favorite character on The Boys. We, Yui. <laughs> you, ever find, you ever read The Boys, the comics, or watch the show, The Boys? No. And now that I know it's all just woke nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Not the show for this. No. We're just making jokes. It's just jokes. We actually have fun sometimes. Okay. Love this song. Great song. I think when I first got the record, I was confused by it. Mm-hmm. Not that I didn't like it, but I was like, yeah, why is like they will praise the Lord. He come, he come. But I've come back. I've gone back on it now. It's one of my favos. Yeah. Are you reading anything that's worth saying? About no, the I'm song? just because I, I also don't like I, I didn't look into it. I assume, you know, the rest of the album is like church is bad and religion is bad. Yep. And then this kind of, it feels like maybe, you know. And I've seen them do this live uh-huh. and it was a single. It's just an interesting, it's based on an old spiritual song. I mean, it's a great showcase of him uh, singing a song kind of with, I don't know, sort of as a, you know, sort of a lead role. Uh, yeah. And then this is, oh, this is a great annotation that I got. That's an unreviewed annotation from our sponsors over at Genius.com. I just pulled that up too, my It says, Hallelujah. One of the lyrics in the song is Hallelujah. And they say, this song was the title by Leonard Cohen. Uh, Oh, sorry. The song with this title by Leonard Cohen also includes a subtle reference to the seven trumpets of Revelations, Mm -hmm. which if you've seen Long Legs, you know that it's Revelation, not Revelations. It's not (laughs) plural. Uh, in the lyrics, it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, and the major lift. Uh-huh. This has negative five votes. Um, someone said it is all just religious imagery without any specific link to any other song. So, I mean, not sure why they thought to say that. It is just like two things that reference the Bible. Yeah, I don't. it has nothing to do with Leonard Cohen, I guess, just that it says hallelujah. I think there are songs that can reference religion and sort of religious hymns or a lot of stuff that I listen to certainly references it in a way that would make my pastor just come, his feet would roll up like the wicked witch of the West sure. when she smashed, smashed by the house. I think Look, he's looking up roll Jordan. He's looking up how to play it. He's going to play it on his little <laughs> piano. That's in his pocket right now. <laughs> that's not a piano. <laughs> uh, no, I just I'm wanted just to, happy to see you. I just wanted to see, and it, it does. It appears roll Jordan roll is a spiritual created by enslaved African-Americans developed from a song written by Isaac Watts in the 18th century, which became well known among slaves in the United States during the 19th century. So this is probably one of those like it's critical of it's I think it's it's obviously it's playing on sort of a um, you keep talking. Well, I think it's it's yeah, it's kind of recontextualizing a sort of like Mm -hmm. a spiritual like the 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 worst possible thing on earth Mm -hmm. connected to a sort of spirituality that uh i don't know was helpful to get people through the worst thing that Mm -hmm. was happening to them but also there is an an establishment that's uh sort of uplifting the thing that's being done that's mm-hmm. bad all these things are at play i don't know that's yeah. kind of where i'm at he's still reading it i think he likes the actual hymn he's gonna sing it for us <laughs> do you remember in uh I can't, I can't were you in cor- <laughs> were you in chorus in uh or choir class in middle school where she made us sing the song about uh yeah gotta pick the cotton yeah of course. it's kind of weird yeah. right yeah it's messed up strange some teachers are kind of stupid so that's the northern we're loving the northern Mm -hmm. uh you got anything else to say i want to go to heaven when i die it's also a song of yeah that would be great to have happen but you know it's not 
And I think also they are kind of, they like the sort of post or not post the apocalyptic uh, imagery mm-hmm. and sort of like, like our friend at genius was saying the seven trumpets of revelation mm-hmm. that are sound that are sounded at the end times. Right. Yeah. And I think uh, also the, the imagery of like the North being uh, cold, mm-hmm. uh, dark place, which is great. I love listening to this album in the winter. I'm glad I brought it to us today. There's, a, <laughs> there seem to. I th- I think this. I think these guys love. Uh, it's the it's, song of ice and fire by George R. R. Martin. I can't go the to game the north. The north is where the wall is. And then the Game of Thrones song comes on again. <laughs> He comes, so he comes, judge so severe, seven trumpets speak, the sound of fear. It's, it is a critical, it's sort of this, everyone looking at this great thing that's going to happen, sort of as this kind of a culty sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Like here's our, our great judgment, the person, this being we should all be so afraid of mm-hmm. because we want to go to heaven. Um, I like it. It's dark. It is it, to me. It is one. Of, it is actually, I said it kind of as a joke, but it is one of the heavier songs on the album just because of the, the context, the tone, it's the context, slower the tone, slower, <clears throat> but I don't know. That's just one of my, when I'm thinking of songs, I go, well, when I'm making a song, I have bullet points. I call them my midnight regulations. I don't get it either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like, just kidding. Get up. We haven't heard a fun, tasty little bass lick in a while. And we love their bass player. Little, little, little. And now he's hanging on to his <laughs> final... <laughs> Midnight! <laughs> I think that, I think, and call me crazy, but I think the Northern is actually there to lead into this song. Oh. Here's to all the years of deaf ear, fallen prayers, rich mind, rich, god damn, rich men behind closed doors are trying to keep him in his place. Yeah. Well, it's it's a, that's what it is. It's a prison. Oh, <laughs> I do. Man. I did feel. <laughs> I, f- I f- did feel like the northern. If it didn't rock so hard, mm-hmm. I would have been like, "Well, this should just be like a one minute, like an intro." Yeah, yeah. But again, that's. I thought there was two extra songs on here that didn't need to be on here. <laughs> yeah, well, you'd be right about that. <laughs> so, and one of them is your favorite. Um. What's I going to say? Oh, you know what made me actually pieced? Um, we're going to see Blink-182 in a couple weeks. It's true. If you're out in Kansas City, come say hi to us. Come <laughs> see your boys. But when they re-release like, the poster and everything, they're like, new op- some like new opening bands, new dates. We'd already got our tickets. Right next to Blink-182 on the poster, it says Alexis on Fire. 
And I like, I was like, oh my God, they're opening for Blink-182 on this whole tour. It's just for one show in Toronto, but the way they have it on the poster, it looks like they're, they're like opening. a co yeah, yeah. I was like, what, why would you do that? It's still pierce the veil and then like Astro nuts or whatever. <laughs> but I was like, but I can't one believe. Show. No, I was so happy to see them again. Nope. Nope. No dice. I love this song. What are midnight regulations? Tell me. I have no idea. It sounds to me like something that happens in a church that shan't be spec spoken of. Right. They're making these secret plans. They're making these the rules for us to follow. Yeah. I'd ask someone, but there's no one to ask. I think I think you're probably right. I love the the back and forth of the vocals on these on this song. I will and because the guy is so scared of even thinking about midnight regulation. He's like midnight. This answer, this is goes back to our Jeff Rosenstock uh, episode where he goes S -s -s stutter something something uh -huh. stutter. What did he say? I don't remember. Stuttering for help. Yeah. What does he say? Something like that. That's I can't think. I got this in my mind. I don't know. It's not a good lyric. But you said, <laughs> when do you think that's okay? Right. And you think it's here? I don't know. It is funny. <laughs> I think it's the only thing of this song that I'm like, why'd you do that? <laughs> I like I, I like it now, but the first midnight. the first five times I listened to it, I was like, "What a fucking cringe thing to do!" <laughs> Especially with your little put on hardcore yeah. voice, like M -m -m midnight. <laughs> like, shut up! Oh my god! <laughs> but now I'm like M -m -m midnight, M -m -m midnight. He's Fenguli. <laughs> That's what he sound like. <laughs> B -b -b -midnight. Brother, there's no charity for the common man when he's in need of relief. Put that up right there. <laughs> oh, God of deaf ear fallen prayers. The man has little hope in God as his prayers have not been answered. Why do people feel the need to go on and put this stuff there? <laughs> but these these choruses. <laughs> where's it coming? Uh, here, let's go to this one. Even he's yelling. <laughs> Even he's yelling. <laughs> <yelling. laughs> check this out. Oh. oh. There is no charity. There is no charity. That I'm 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 getting goose pimples. That just hits different when they're both doing it. Cause they have him. This I like the. They hold back because he does the one before that and it's just him and they leave the empty space of nothing just so you hear just complete rocking out. Yeah. And then he goes through the little, his little thing he's got to say about choking. Right? <laughs> yeah. We call that a bridge. It's about the church telling you, hold on to your hope and you can't, you're saying, I can't, you're making a fool out of me. If I swallow, if you swallow your pride, you will choke. And then they both come in. And then they're like, you didn't hear us before, mother ever. <laughs> there is no charity. <laughs> so, yeah, that's going in top top album for me. It's a good song. Born and Raised, uh, the Northern into Midnight Regulations, just... It's good stuff. Just, God. It's good stuff. But um, you know what I was watching the other day? Huh? Wizard of Oz. And I just brought that up. And they're uh, going to the Emerald City. Yeah. And the, yeah. I know that's, yeah, that's the movie. But they go on a yellow brick road? Yes. Shouldn't they go on an Emerald Street? Oh. 
oink, oink. I'm gonna get you down at the end of the rest day. Boys, 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 boys. Boys. You can't not miss even once. Boys, 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 <laughs> boys, boys. It's okay to miss sometimes, but you just refuse to miss. We can't help it. This is this is this is punk music. This is a punk song through and through. I mean, there's nothing but then again. The chorus hits, and you've got a little angel coming in on, and they and it slows the the tempo down too, because you got. Well, they do the halftime thing at the chorus, right? Where, yeah, not slowing down. You're right. I'm sorry. It it's sounds slower, but it's actually the same. Tempo. But it what it does is it gives him room to. Oh, hi. Yeah. Which you just don't get other places because other people can't do it. <laughs> Unless you're gonna do it. I always wondered I, in the uh, Weird Al song where he's doing Whoa. "It's getting hot in here, take off all your clothes," mm-hmm. whatever his parody of it is, he still says, "Unless you're gonna do it." <laughs> so he kept that part the yeah. same, and I thought that was funny. And actually, so that actually means you he didn't do his job. Yeah, he should be sued because it's supposed to be parody. He should be changing every lyric at least a little bit. Yeah. Uh this song's <sighs> great. Not, I mean. God, do, do I need to rank all of them? No. No. I love it for what it is. It seems to me to be an outlier just in terms of other... I know this was one of the first ones they wrote for the album, so that's where I'm like, maybe there's some... They started to go a different way thematically, yeah. and you just start naturally maybe writing in that groove mm-hmm. where this one's just kind of a cool banger. It just seems to be a little outside of like uh, religion, sort of people's rights. I mean, it it isn't because it's about like it's about the work. It is the, about that the poor. It's about yeah, it's about the crusty part of town, babe. The so, working class, but just that can't get no freaking help. All over thematically, it seems a little different. Yeah, I I agree. I think it does seem like like th- this one I might pop off to throw on Wayfarer Youth. Mm-hmm. Uh oh, might pop this one off to throw on Wayfarer Youth. <laughs> that or well, we'll get to the end when I when I shock you all. Yeah, I am uh, very not worried. I'm just already pissed off. <laughs> so I don't have much to say. I mean, the lyrics are no. right there for anyone that wants to read them. It's about the bad part of town and just trying to. But it does feel a, a little more like in the vein of a punk song, where it's just like this is it. This is what we're singing about. And this, but it's also Leave a nothing to. Uh, it's not an interpretation. It's not a negative thing, right? No. You're looking at this part of town almost through these rose tinted glasses of almost a nostalgia looking back at all the boys in the halfway houses wave to the girls of Emerald street. They're, they're making this place their own together, but then the cops come in. Oh, yeah. Dirty, dirty oinkers. No it's controlling insane. hot summer nights. The sun goes down on the edge of town at the end of every day. We said that was a sacks of fire. It's a bay. Our callous fingers, blood red on the brick, but we hold on. Mm-hmm. Hold on. We'll never falter, though they want us. They to want slip, us to slip. But we hold these on. These bourgeoisie. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I, yeah, it's a good song. It's a good punk song. Mm. Well, um, yeah, what was he talking about? He says uh, sun go down, and then basically, um, hey, don't. Uh, I was gonna. I wanted to mention this to you before we start the episode. Yeah, if you end up in like a the, like a spaceship, try like, not. Hmm? Well, like one that like the what's the guy from Star Trek? Kirk. Yeah, he went up on the spaceship, yeah. and then they. They got kind of up in the atmosphere, and he was like, I don't like life anymore. Yeah. <laughs> he's like 100, and he's like, it made me sad. Like that type I think of spaceship? It was like that type, but I think he wanted to turn it and just start heading for the sun.
<laughs> There's a little something there. So much yeah. back there. Where's uh take me to the bridge? Yeah, where is that? That's the chorus. Rock it up! Tambourine guy. Someone's ripping a new one back there. Y'all ain't actually even hearing these lyrics. Y'all are asleep. Y'all are sleeping on these lyrics. Y'all had these lyrics in your ears for 13 years, but you don't even want to be talking about them yet. <laughs> what will our lesson be when we are all ablaze? That our benevolence was the start of our decay? Or that we did not learn from the past or from the mistake of the past? God, we are heading for the sun. It's over. Yeah. This kind of brings me back to some stuff off Crisis, the way the course is laid out here with we are heading for the sun, we are heading for the sun, we are heading for the sun. But some messages I like when they are repeated yeah. to get it into your stupid head. Yeah. We're heading for the sun. <laughs> yeah. And then what? When everything's burning up because you didn't want to do your stupid, you didn't believe in some... Then what? Mm -hmm. Just. <laughs> I already threw my mini Sharpie. Yeah. Mini Sharpie. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of my, uh, I think this is one of my top songs on yeah! there. It's just good, dude. I don't know what else to say about some of this shit. It's great. And it's one of these. I'm sweating through my goddamn pants. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't know what else to say. You got to read the lyrics for these songs because it's not just a little ripper. But you know what's great? I don't think you do. Because <gasps> unlike those little stinkers in mm. Every Time I Die mm. and, the, these other, and the other screaming, screaming-centric bands, you do have to read the lyrics because you don't know what that... Oh, because you don't know what the, they're saying. Yeah. Yeah. But the, I can hear... I yeah. can hear the growler and I can hear the other growler who only occasionally gets to growl. I guess my point is pay attention to them. Oh, sure. Because he's fitting in, he's fitting Yo, in dirty. bars here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's fitting in some. We'll drag our hindsight through the twilight of this era to where our freedom reigns and the old thought is laid to dust. Let the Philistines wallow in their decadence while the enlightened minds usher in the dawning of a new. I mean, and, but like you said, you can hear him. It's not like, oh. Yeah. Oh. But also, if you're not listening to the lyrics, you're just rocking out. Yeah. I love you either way. Now, what does this mean? There's one comment mm -hmm. that says young and old. Oh, and then there's two, two asterisks. asterisks. Yeah, it looks to me like they don't know how to uh, um, submit a lyric change. Young and old. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, yeah, I like this. I like this song a lot. One of my favos. Yep, me too. But what do I know? Maybe I just accept crime. I'm not even trying anymore. Someone's sweating through there. <laughs> no, don't. Don't do bad. Oh, Jesus. Ha! Everybody on the count of three. It's the crowd. What's out right? 
Okay. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Tambourine guy's back. Police. What do we got for this song, Joey? Just. Oh, well, it's good. It's kind of hard to say you don't like it as much as the others because <laughs> it's it's like when you say you don't like Star Wars, uh, The Last Jedi, right? And everyone's like, because you're a bigot. Yeah, you're like no, no, no. I just have a problem with the story in, in the wider canon. No, no. I just like the other ones better. <laughs> It's, I, I, I agree with the message. <laughs> it's good. I just leading into what is actually the final song on the album. It's another one that's kind of. I'm like, put Emerald Street and, and this one together earlier. Yeah. And like, then they kind of go together as two sort of like F the main. Yeah. Right. They just, they feel a little more outside of the. Because then I'm like, the with through line. Heading for the sun should go into burial. Mm-hmm. For me, but I'm just kind of a freak. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's it's freak. Yeah, it's a good song. I I do also hate that it kind of is like the everybody on the count of three except crime one two yeah. three. It's a punk thing to do, right? But so, it sometimes punk is like the cringiest shit yeah because it becomes self-parody after all because it yeah. goes well why were they doing that yeah and why are we doing it it just it's like everybody on the count of three accept crime so you're like i guess on the count of three i'll accept crime because <laughs> they don't leave room for you to like there's no call and response yeah i don't know it's just there's a little cheesiness to it yeah. but then you get to the chorus and it's like it's a ripper of a chorus but, and you're like yeah i yeah i agree with this message it's just why'd you start it with the cheesiest little thing I you know. can think of but they are also having fun. They don't take themselves too seriously to where they can't. Because what's another thing on the album that he does that's like that? He did something else somewhere else. Oh, was it Midnight Regulation? Yeah. So, yeah. But do they know that it's kind of funny? I don't know that they're in on the sort of, we're just having fun. It like is always their, weird when it's a recorded version, when it's like, if you did it live again, yeah. saying that, because it's like, well, you're just over and over again in the studio doing takes of everybody on the count of three. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> yeah. Bethlehem, from Bethlehem to Galilee, except crime. One, two, three. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe there's no other way to start the song. Okay, he's well, gobsmacked by something he just saw. <laughs> the genius annotation for it. So at the end, near the end, mm-hmm. I feel no guilt. I won't repent. Day right. to day, I accept crime. That's for me to confess. And then the annotation says, uh, they often make reference to Catholicism or Christianity. In this line, I feel like they're saying, and this is the annotation, I feel like they, they're saying they know that lust or homosexuality is a sin but they accept it and those who practice it. The sin is for me to confess or rather their own issue to deal with away from the opinions of other people. Uh, hmm. There's got to be a way to delete stuff off of seven thumbs down right. and some comments. We don't need to get into that, but 
no i i yeah, of course I mean, it's wrong yeah and they that person said it the just the first sentences no member of this band is religious yeah the whole point is you're saying we don't need but you get it it's pretty you're, you're saying i won't repent because they you don't need to yeah I feel no guilt. I won't repent. Someone saying someone just because someone else thinks something is a sin. Yeah. That's not saying you you're putting it in their context. Right. You're saying this is a sin. I won't repent for this thing because I don't agree with you. Yeah. Just don't trust the people on genius is what I'm saying. It is always a bummer to listen to songs like this that came out uh, close to 15 years ago. (laughs) And then it's like stuff that's happening in the world is like backwards. Like, Mm -hmm. well, nothing changed. Yeah, and it, at the time that they were doing this, mm-hmm. I don't. I almost feel like, I, well, maybe not the time, but like the few years after this, when Obama fixed mm-hmm. everything, yes, and everything was perfect. This would have been like, what are you even talking about? Right. I think when they were writing it, not so much. No. Yeah. Totally. And even then, I mean, as everyone, but it is weird that it feels like now is a time when the song would feel it feels relevant more yeah. than it was then. Yeah, exactly. Cause I mean, even when it came out, I think I remember being like, yeah, yeah. I get like, I'm, I'm on board as our friends. Mom is going to boycott against <laughs> gay people at Chick-fil-A. Yeah. <laughs> I was I, like, well, uh, this is sort of, yeah, we should all feel this way. Yeah. And then it's too bad that that's not the case still. And I think like then five years later, pretty much everyone agreed. Yeah. That's what's crazy. Yeah. It's like <laughs> there was a sweet spot there for a while where everyone was like, yeah, of course. What are you even talking about? <laughs> and then something happened. I don't know what. I can't imagine what it possibly could have been. Uh, some sort of brain damage. I don't know. But um, yeah, everyone was fine with it. And then <laughs> I don't know. Uh, something happened. And yeah. of course, we speak from a, we are sons of privilege. Yeah. So. I'm sure. I've, I, well, of course, we know that it was never actually fine. Well, no, and I'm sure that if if um, people heard us saying that, they would. I mean, on either side, either saying that, well, of course, it's never been fine. It's actually been a dangerous thing. Or the there's also people on the other side saying, actually, it is a sin, and mm-hmm. what you guys are saying is wrong. Yeah. Both sides are asking for our uh, burial. <laughs> burial. Meh. Oh. Uh. 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 himself in the studio he said I'm a cook (laughs) 
That's it. That's it. That's the album. That's it. That's the statement. Mm. What did you think about this being the actual ending song of the album? You don't like it. Uh, well, as I as I listened to it, and there's two more songs, I said, this song needs to be one minute. Oh! But as a closer, I say, well, yeah, of course you drag it out and you do your little har- oh. harmonies at the end. You make yeah. it long. and Because yeah. we know it's the end of the album. Yeah. You don't. You stupid. <laughs> they say bonus track. They don't say bonus track online, though. That's another. They don't. That's, That's why I, I was corn-fused. Yeah. They don't say bonus track, and the album doesn't say like deluxe edition or anything. Right. It just it, they're just there now. It, yeah, it just says that's the album. It says two thousand nine. Like you, sometimes when it's a new ver, like bonus version, it's a different year, or there's two options to look at. Nope. Yeah, I looked. Don't worry, I looked. So you probably did tell me. I've I've seen them play this one, but I don't remember because that was four weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. This whatever. one's good. I've seen him do it live. Good stuff. It's just a different... It's an ending song. Yeah, it's definitely the closer. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily think you need it. No, but I'm certainly not uh, against having it on there. No. If I go from Except Crime to Burial and there's sort of this end thing where you get him doing his thing. I don't know if I listen to it all the way through every time I listen to the album at this point, but... I bet... I bet live they close with this. Did they? I should look up what he closed. He what and then, they close with. Well, because I can imagine they all slowly walk off stage as he's just him and his little organ. Well, they did. What did they do? They jammed out. Oh, no. I think they maybe closed with Dog's Blood, which was the EP they did after this. That's even heavier. Oh, man. It's some of the best shit but they're all they just start jamming out like super heavy and then one by one and what's his face wade did he takes his guitar shoves it against his uh amp and then duct tapes all around (laughs) it so his his amp is just stuck in the air giving feedback they all kind of walk off then dallas is like thank you thank you because they're all canadian yeah riot fest set list well, I tell you what, I, I do like the song. It's a good closer. Um, but is it my... F- I mean, it's... I think it's a good closer. I don't know how I can put it on the this whole... This song is... No, a they mi- clo- did they close with Young Cardinals the last time I saw them? Dog's <laughs> Blood, this could be anywhere, and then Young Cardinals. Blech. Weird. I'd have been mad. Yeah, you would be. <laughs> I don't like well, Young okay, Cardinals. Well, okay, but here's the thing. There. That's fine. But the last time I saw them was at Riot Fest, which was a ten song set. Yeah, from you're, not gonna, you're not gonna you're not gonna close with. And them. they just got back together to put out their new album. Yeah. So there's actually I would I would have been pissed if they played Burial at the end. Yeah, if you're like, if you what? got like four, 35, sec, 35 seconds to see them, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they're yeah they're playing trying to squeeze in as many songs as they can. Well, let's do this then. Let's listen to the bonus tracks before we finalize our let's take a look at do we, we do them in this order could we do them in the order that i heard them okay so we'll do two sisters yeah. oh my goodness hey by the way doing two sisters is kind of my dream <laughs> oh lordy twins basil twins, twins. Good to me. 
Now, Landon, you'll be happy to know this song is a minute 30. It's a short one. It clearly, to me, sounds produced different. Like, it wasn't kind of polished to the the e- final album stage. Yeah. Sounds a little different. That could just be the upload. I don't know. And I think... Uploads, uh, downloads. I mean, who am I, George Carlin? And I'd say cut this from the album. Okay. Which they did. Well, they did. It's yeah. not on the album. That's what I'm saying, though. God. <laughs> Um, okay, That's, I, I felt it was a very strange one to go into the f- final song with. You so know? would I, it's because it's not on the album. Yeah. So and and actually on the album album, it's the last one, which is even, weird, but it's like a minute and a half. Yeah, so but I that's guess, even weirder. I think anyway. it's a bonus track. Okay. Do you like that song? It's fine. Right. Don't care. Okay. It's fine for what it is, but it doesn't fit on the album. You just got an error. He's just got a bug on his computer. It's because he was talking about two sisters. Wayf, um, I don't there know. we go. Is Wayfair? That's the the website, right? Where they, <laughs> you get kids from? Yeah, that Ellen bought uh, children from. Or I guess that makes sense. Then Wayfair or youth. Yeah. I just love this. I'm getting Tony Hawk Pro Skater vibes. What are you doing? I didn't do anything. You turned it off. Oh. <laughs> okay i can't go to that page hold on stop genius is trying to do something you're gonna turn me into oh i'm going back <laughs> this is pretty cool for an end song mm-hmm. i liked it Letting Wade really rip there. What the hell is that? I was like, I just felt like it kind of ties up the old crows, young cardinals aspect that the album starts with. You think it fulfilled the promise? Well, I just think because they do that at the top and then kind of the rest of it's like religion sucks Mm -hmm. and the earth is ending and all that stuff. And then they never really go back to kind of Emerald Street. Uh, not that it I mean it doesn't have to right. sometimes it's just a collection of songs that mm-hmm. you wrote around the same time and that's that but I kind of like when there's a through line mm-hmm. and that kind of felt like and it was after burial is the slow sort of mm-hmm. and then they're like just kidding one last <laughs> so I kind of like that song but it's not on the album. That's fine. That's and, fine. You know, honestly, with those, even those two extra songs, it's only 47 minutes. Yeah. So it's not like a long album. Maybe we it's take just... off two sisters because that it doesn't really fit anywhere in here. We pop that off. I know everyone's going to hate me for this, but I'd take, <laughs> take off young Cardinals. I don't really like that song. That's wild. And maybe uh, no rest. These are just the 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 lesser tracks. I like them all. I can't uh, abide by taking off Young Cardinals. Well, of I think that's not. kind of the. You have Old Crows as the as sort of an intro, I and know. I think Young Cardinals is the first where it's like, here's what the album is. Yeah. 
And I like his kind of soaring vocals of the oh, over the drums. And I know you think it's a boring chorus, but whatever. I like the sound of it. It's then a good sound. Sons of Privilege, Born and Raised is really like that whole kind of section. Yeah. Good. Good. No rest is fine. To me, it's just a great, it's kind of grown on me over the years too, of just how much I really liked the sound of this specific album yeah. with, as opposed to their, their new or their older stuff, I guess. Um, it's a good, it's, yeah. it's a great, it's a great album there. I said it. I like this a lot. I'm going to go check out all their other stuff. Great pick. Did you think I would like this? I was hoping because there's some heavier stuff I could go with and I kind of felt like, well, there's no denying, you know, uh-huh. <laughs> there's no denying uh, some of the catchiness of the courses and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I was interested to hear what you thought about old Georgie's voice, but it's not so much as like, this is just heavy sort of for heavy sake. No, not sort at all. Of overbearing. It's uh, to me, it all seems justified. Yeah. And it's something I've listened to since I was whatever, 13, 14. Sure. Of but, um, I think, I don't know. They're, they have some interesting stuff on their earliest albums. They're not as polished. I think sure. crisis for me is sort of that part where it's like, they kind of hit what they wanted to sound like. And then their newest album where they all have kind of, been producing and working on stuff with other bands they've really they've got some interesting stuff on there that that one i've listened to quite a bit and it's like one of those where a band comes back after 13 years and you feel like they do have something to say as opposed to uh, some people wanted to hear us put some stuff out and we're just back because of you guys it's sort of like we're still friends we still feel like why not do Mm -hmm. this which is how a band should be yeah so that's cool um yeah, this one I would say though is still like, man. If not, I don't know. I still I need to listen to the newest one a bit more to say. But I'd say this is top two or three for me. Mm-hmm. Somewhere up there, it, it depends on what I want to listen to. But sure, I'd give this. Uh, I'm gonna give it an eight for me, but I picked it so. I mean, a couple songs. I don't like it. I, I I can't I can't give it a I, I I can't give it anything less than I mean. I just it maybe it's not something I would listen to as much, but it right. kind of is also. I so would, I don't even. I just feel like I can't give it an eight yet. I haven't spent enough time with it. I would say, well, okay. So what are you gonna give it? Seven point five. Okay. <laughs> also, I would check out, I'll play this super quick, but when they said we done 2012, they put out an EP called Death Letter where they did re imaginings of six of their songs. Uh, so like Born and Raised is, they're very interesting versions, a little kind of city in color. Yeah. But I listen to these six songs a lot. These versions of them. Oh. This is Wade doing a little less of his whatever. Find your belief in that which cannot be discovered. Countless lessons lie and never I don't think George sung on these. That's the thing. I don't think he's like, I can't do that. <laughs> That's beautiful. These are great versions of these. And it really focuses on the lyrics. The, yeah. They're just very cool. Um, I like it. Like I said, Dallas will do versions of other At Lux Sunfire songs, kind of solo, which are cool to check out. Um, yeah, just one of my favorite bands. I was hoping to not keep hitting all my favorites so early in this show, but what are you going to do? I don't think, I, like I said, I probably won't pick City and Color Exactly next time, but I wanted to hit this before I went into one of sure. his. I don't exactly know what album I would pick of his either. Okay. But that's what I got for you. Um, what okay. Do you have for me. Well, I think I'll pick something kind of 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 a similar vintage. Um also I think it's the it's the twentieth anniversary of this album. 
something I found early on and I've always loved them. Their latest stuff, maybe not as much, but certainly this stuff, this, the, the early aughts. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's the sweet stuff. Um, and I know you listen to them too, so it might be a nice easy okay. one for us. Or at least you used to. <laughs> And we kind of have bonded over that before. This will be Newfound Glory Catalyst. I started typing it in like I have to find it. <laughs> did you did you get the uh the vinyl? Yeah. For okay, I gotta get I gotta glow in the dark. That. And there was I just for the hell of it, there's a part can you go back to uh heading for the sun? Sure. The bridge. Cause there is this is what made me think of it. It kind of not even really, but it kind of sounds like a little part in one of the songs on that album. Uh, this part? Yeah. Literally just that. Play it again. That's all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it kind of sounds like uh, on one of those songs. I can't think of it now when the little Chad man goes... <laughs> and that's all it just kind of sounded enough like it where it, i it sparked in my head and i was like well what better time than now mm. i guess one of your favorite bands alexis on fire into one of your favorite bands and it, well i don't know yeah i'd say one of your favorite bands yeah. one of my favorite bands mm. And I'll say this about glow in the dark vinyl. I've always heard it sounds like absolute shit. Oh no 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 the 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 disc isn't. Oh, well we'll see. <laughs> that. Well, I was gonna say I thought okay because I was like I didn't see that version. Maybe there is a version. What is that the is? color of the vinyl? Is it like brown or something? It was a cool color. Yeah, it's like purple it and looks brown. Like the cover. Yeah, there's a few different ones, but the the actual cover okay has glow in the dark. Yeah, I like, think I missed out. It's pretty cool. But I did sounds get great. a glow in the dark album mm -hmm. it was like the first it was like pre-orders went up at midnight the the color that had the least amount was glow in the dark and yeah. i was like i i know i'm not supposed to do this gotcha. but i did it and i played it and i'm like hey it sounds fine yeah so <laughs> let that be a lesson for all of you and thank you once again for being an earbud we'll see you uh next week or two weeks from now when we cover catalyst well we have a i don't know what's going on with our schedule yeah something's coming out but it's probably before this probably sorry Bye, bye. Each week we listen to an album, here's our mind. Just know it's gonna take about three hours of your time to hear us complain or face each other's taste. But no matter what, at the end of the day, we're just best friends who love different music we are.